In the short time that human beings have been flying, many have become well known to the general public for their exploits in the sky. Not all the aviators we're looking at in today's video were necessarily the best pilots, and some were known for a single flight, but all played a role in shaping the history of aviation. In the video today, 10 aviators whose accomplishments made them, if only for a short time, household names. Number 10. Jean-Francois Pilatre de Rosier (1754–1785) and the Montgolfier brothers. It's difficult to determine who was truly the first man to fly. Some maintain it was a Spanish Muslim named Abbas ibn Furnas, who very briefly may have flown a glider from a tower in Cordoba, Spain, sometime in the mid-9th century. Others name a Benedictine monk named Elmer of Malmesbury, who also supposedly flew a glider from a church tower in the 11th century. None of these have been confirmed, though, so it leaves it somewhat open to debate. Most historians are pretty clear, though. The first aviator in modern times was a little-known Frenchman by the name of Jean-Francois Pilatre de Rosier, who is credited with being the first man to ascend in a free-flying hot air balloon over Paris in November of 1783. It's still a little murky, though, as he technically wasn't the first man to ascend in this balloon. It turns out that another Frenchman, Jacques Dion Montgolfier, one of two brothers who actually designed and built the balloon de Rosier was to eventually ascend in, had flown a few hours earlier, only his flight was tethered, while de Rosier's was not, leaving the question of who was the first, well, rather up in the air. Regardless, both flights made the balloon's builders, the Montgolfier brothers, household names throughout France, and the first men credited with being first to fly. De Rosier, though, is generally considered to have been the first true balloonist and aviator. Unfortunately, his his daring cost him his life a couple of years later when his balloon crashed in an attempt to cross the English Channel, marking the first aviation fatality. Number 9. Louis Blériot from 1872 to 1936 Blériot was to France what the Wright brothers were to America, except he was more than a pilot, with an impressive number of firsts on his resume. Known for designing the first practical headlamps for cars, he used the profits from that venture to finance his attempts to build the first ever manned aircraft, and while he didn't fly in time to beat the Wright brothers, he was the first man to fly in Europe. Even more impressive was that in 1909 he became the first to fly across the English Channel, a feat considered to be every bit as dangerous as Lindbergh's crossing of the Atlantic 18 years later due to the primitive state of technology. Blériot went on to design and build aircraft for France right up until the time of his death in 1936, making him one of the premier European aircraft designers. He also had the distinction of being on hand to greet Lindbergh upon his arrival in Paris in 1927, bringing two aviation greats together for the very first time. Number 8. Baron Manfred von Richthofen Better known as the Red Baron because of the bright red color he painted his Fokker triplane, few aviators are as famous as Germany's top fighter ace of World War I. Credited with shooting down an astonishing 80 aircraft over France before being killed, he remains almost as famous today as he was nearly a century ago. What made him so formidable a foe was not his flying skills, which were considered merely average, but his marksmanship, which by all accounts was pretty darn impressive. Mystery still surrounds his death to this very day as historians debate whether he was shot down by a Canadian pilot named Brown, who was officially credited with the kill, or whether he was mortally wounded by ground fire, which seems more likely, while strafing Allied positions. In either case, the only thing that's known for sure is that Snoopy didn't bring the legendary ace down, despite his many attempts. Number 7. John Glenn, 1921 to 2016. Other than Neil Armstrong, perhaps no pilot has achieved as much fame as the native Ohioan and Marine Corps fighter pilot who later became an astronaut and a senator. What's curious about this is why. He wasn't the first man in space, that would be Yuri Gagarin of the USSR, nor was he even the first American, that would be Alan Shepard. And he never actually flew in space again until he caught a ride as a passenger on the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1998, which made him 77 at the time and the oldest man in space. What he did do, however, is still noteworthy. He was the first American to orbit the Earth, doing so three times in five hours on February 20, 1962. While a fairly unimpressive feat by today's standards, it was quite an accomplishment in 1962, especially when one couldn't be sure that the entire rocket wouldn't just explode on the launch pad during liftoff. Glenn later retired from NASA and eventually became a U.S. Senator and perennial presidential contender, though he never achieved the degree of fame in 20 years of politics that he did in just a few hours hours on board Freedom 7. Number 6. Chuck Yeager, 1923 to present. 
Few men exemplified the daring-to-do attitude of test pilots of the 40s and 50s as well as Chuck Yeager, the man who achieved fame for being the first to fly faster than the speed of sound in 1947. While we take supersonic flight somewhat for granted today, it must be remembered that several men had died trying to accomplish the feat before Chuck Yeager did it. Yeager went on to break many other speed and altitude records, as well as becoming the very first American to fly a Soviet-built MiG-15 that had been acquired in South Korea when its North Korean pilot defected. It's interesting that he wasn't among the seven men chosen to be the first astronauts, but maybe he was just a little too busy at the time for such pedestrian pursuits. Number 5. Jimmy Doolittle, 1896-1993 An innovator and speed plane racer who set many speed records in the 1930s, he was probably best known for his spectacular and daring raid on Tokyo in April of 1942 when he led a flight of 16 army bombers off the rolling deck of an aircraft carrier on a one-way mission to Japan. While the attack did little in terms of material damage to the Japanese, it gave Americans a much-needed morale boost during the darkest days of the war. It also earned him the Congressional Medal. Of honor. While the Doolittle Raid was his most famous accomplishment, perhaps his most important contribution to aviation came in the 1920s, when he contributed to the development of instrument flying, which, while taken for granted today, was a vital innovation in terms of flying safety. How daring was he? Well, consider that he was not only the first man to take off and land in an airplane using instruments alone – the canopy was even covered – but he also performed the first successful outside loop-the-loop -loop in history, a maneuver considered to be fatal by many aviators at the time. Number 4. Steve Fawcett, 1944-2007 Though he made his fortune in the financial services industry, Fawcett was best known for setting many world records, 116 in five different sports, 60 of which still stood in 2007. This included five non-stop circumnavigations of the Earth. He was also the first to complete a non-stop circumnavigation in a helium-filled balloon, which was difficult even by modern standards, having been attempted numerous times before without success. Fawcett finally accomplished this feat in 2002. He was also famous for making the first circumnavigation of the globe in an airplane without refueling, Then he did this in 2007. His Earhart-esque disappearance while flying over the Nevada desert in 2007 remained one of the last great aviation mysteries for a time, at least until his remains were discovered a year later. Number 3. The Wright Brothers, Wilbur, 1867-1912, and Orville, 1871-1948 what the Montgolfier brothers were to lighter than air aviation, the Wright brothers were to heavier than air. The possibility that the others may have actually been the first to achieve controlled man flight is still hotly debated today, but no one can deny the impact the two bicycle makers from Dayton, Ohio had on the world of aviation. In fact, few photos are as famous as the one with Wilbur Wright managing to fly a short distance in what looked like a kite on steroids attached to a lawnmower engine. That short flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 3, 1903, kicks started the modern era of aviation. While they were not regarded as being particularly top-notch pilots, their forte being more in the areas of design and marketing, they certainly developed the foundation upon which others would build, eventually making the world a much smaller place. Number 2. Amelia Earhart, 1897 to 1937. No female aviator, or aviatrix as they were known, was as famous as Lady Lindy, called so because of her similar exploits and physical resemblance to the famed aviator Charles Lindbergh. Earhart certainly wasn't the first female aviator, nor was she even the best female pilot of her time, but her exploits in being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic in 1932 and the first to fly non-stop from Honolulu to Oakland in 1935 made her a household name. It was her final flight, however, that made her a legend. While attempting to circumnavigate the globe in 1937, she and her navigator, Fred Noonan, disappeared somewhere over the Pacific near Howland Island, never to be seen again. Recently, some evidence has come to light that she might have landed on a small island near Howland. It is believed that there she perished from exposure, but this has not been confirmed. Unfortunately, she became far more famous in death than she ever did in life, but such is the fickleness of fate. Number 1. Charles Lindbergh, 1902-1974 Obviously, no aviator in history is as famous as Lucky Lindy, the first man to cross the Atlantic Ocean solo. He flew from New York to Paris in May of 1927 in a special built monoplane. As a result of his exhausting quest, he became the 1920s equivalent of a rock star, though some of that bluster wore off in later years when he opposed American entry into World War II. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, however, he became an ardent supporter of the war effort and even flew more than 50 
50 combat missions in the Pacific Theater, thereby restoring his reputation and his fame. He was even credited with shooting down a Japanese aircraft in July of 1944. In later years, he became an ardent environmentalist who paradoxically also maintained a love for technology. Writing in a 1967 Life magazine article, he summed up his philosophy by saying, The human future depends on our ability to combine the knowledge of science with the wisdom of wildness. He lived out his life quietly in Hawaii until his death in 1974. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not subscribe to my other channel called Biographics? You'll find a link to that on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.